Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This big, tall, bushy plant next to me is called Monarda, aka Bee Balm, aka Wild Bergamot, aka Horse Mint. It has a few different names. It's a Native American herb and it has many benefits and I'm gonna tell you everything that I know about it. So let's get started. I'm absolutely terrible at giving plant descriptions, but I will refer to my favorite plant encyclopedia book um, that I will link in the description below that describes Monarda as having downy lance shaped leaves. So they're very soft and velvety. And the flowers are different shades of pink depending on whatever variety you decide to buy. There were a lot of pollinators on this plant before I came over here, but I'm not going to be offended by that. The leaves on this variety are a little bit darker than the generic bee balm variety I just showed you. They have more red veining in the leaves, uh, and as you can see, the, the flowers are a deep purple compared to a lighter pink. And this plant I bought as a start, whereas the one I just showed you guys, I started as a seed. Um, I planted them in the same season. And as you can tell, this one is about a third of the height and a third of the width as what I have over there in the other bed. So the variety is a bit smaller, but I will say that the smell is absolutely beautiful and it's um, much stronger than the variety I have over there. And the flowers are hands down prettier. So give some other varieties a try just to see what you like. Bee balm flowers have this spiky tubular shape to them and they're obviously pink or purple and the tubular shape makes it perfect for hummingbirds as you can see. That tubular shape and I like to use these for cut flowers too. So I use these in bouquets because it makes the bouquet smell amazing and the flowers are very unique in my opinion uh, and also apparently I haven't noticed, but when the seed pods dry out, uh, the birds love them. So that's another reason to plant this. You can bring another animal to the garden and feed another animal <laughs> with your seeds. Now in this shot here, you can see clearly the bee balm to the left, which is the common bee balm variety and the bee balm on the right, the purple one, uh, that is the one that I started from a, from a plant. And you can see that this, uh, that one is really, really small <laughs> compared to the common variety, which is almost as tall as me. Uh, and it's really growing extremely fast. So this is just a side by side so that you can see the difference between the two. When you first see bee balm, sprout or pop up you're going to see these leaves um, and this is going to grow nice and tall it won't be as tall as this the first year it'll probably be about a foot or two tall um, and it's very herbaceous but once it's about to bloom you'll see that the end of the plant starts to bulb up like this and I'll show you in just a second what it looks like when it's about to bloom Okay, so this is what the flowers look like when they're about to bloom. And um, honestly, they're darker than I remember, but they're still lighter than the other variety I have over there. And even before they're about to bloom, they look still very pretty and unique. So we know bee balm smells great, looks great. And you guys know that it's a Native American herb. And if I haven't told you, it is native to the Eastern and Central US. So you might see it wild, but I planted this one here. Now that we know those things, let me tell you about some of the benefits. Last year, I 
decided to dig up some of the common bee balm that I just showed you and spread it to the sidewalk area in the back of the house. And the reason why I did that is because it really does attract the pollinators. And in this area of the garden, we want to bring in as many pollinators as possible. Bee balm attracts butterflies, obviously bees. That's the number one pollinator we see. We also see the hoverflies, but the most beautiful and our favorite pollinator of all would be the hummingbirds. And we typically see them early in the morning and it's a beautiful sight. So if you wanna attract hummingbirds to your garden or any of the other pollinators, plant bee balm. I promise you it will be successful. Bee balm is also medicine. It's typically used to treat digestive issues like nausea or um, indigestion or, or gas, um, but it's also used to treat upper respiratory issues, to reduce fevers, and some other things that you should probably research. I am not a doctor, so I am not um, prescribing anyone with anything. So I suggest that if you're going to take anything internally to either check with your doctor or do your research to the point where you feel comfortable enough to ingest it. So uh, bee balm is a generally safe herb to use medicinally and I have used it for tea in the past. For women, if you're using um, lots of bee balm or drinking lots of bee balm tea, it can bring on your cycle. So just be careful when you are taking any kind of herbs. Like I said, do your research. but it is a pretty good tasty tea it's not bad at all it tastes really good and um that's why i you know i like to use it medicinally for that purpose bee balm has a really good flavor so it can be eaten fresh or fully cooked you can also dry it like a dried herb and store it in a, a dark jar or a spice jar and store it in the spice cabinet um, and use it for whatever flavor foods you could probably imagine. Um, when you're cutting the plant for dried herbs, I cut the stem really low on the plant so it can grow back nice and tall. Uh, and then I hang it upside down and let it dry until you can crumble the leaves. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. Well, I hope that you learned something new about bee balm, or if you didn't even know what bee balm was, I'm glad that you now know about a new plant. Um, I hope that you can give some of these things a try. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. And um, look how pretty these are. If you're looking for more information about the book that I was mentioning, I have been reading this book for years. It's the Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. I will leave that in the description below. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.